So it's really you at last. How are you? I'm pretty tired. I've been recording so much, you know. You're tired now? Yeah, I haven't had a sleep in about all night. No, I've been working on the last LP. How much sleep do you need to be alert? Alert? Oh, I guess about eight. <laughs> eight hours? Yeah, I had about eight minutes, so, you know. I think minutes? That itself. Yeah. I've slept longer than that in my monologue. Yeah. Want to cut the uh, racket off on the sound here? Uh, nice gentleman. <laughs> What is that sound that, that we hear uh, irritating us so dreadfully? Well, it sounds, it sounds something like the uh, New York Street. I don't know. It's like a, today the air is all static, so the amplifier is static. Music is loud, the air is loud, and, you know, we're trying to settle things down a little bit. But it's going to take a, like a rest, you know. I asked a practical question and got a philosophical answer. I don't think is that's that terrific. philosophical? I thought it oh, was. Thought you said was there's George. static in the air today oh, yeah. and all. Yeah, well, I was just trying to get a point across before we, uh, you know, take our rest. Oh, I'm sorry, he's still on. <laughs> We're going to both sack out. Mr. Young, will you uh, <laughs> yeah, entertain right the audience for us? Um, let me ask you something. Um, what really happened to you that night at Woodstock? Did you stay on so long you just really were? No, no, we was playing in the morning. Yeah. And it was announced that it was canceled. The show at the Dick Heavis was canceled. So, And then later on, it was announced that it was on. Oh, really? And uh, I didn't know what was happening. I was so exhausted, you know. Yeah. It was like a... What do you call those things? Nervous breakdown or whatever, you know. Physical breakdown. Yeah. You don't suppose it was a real. You didn't have. Have you ever had a nervous breakdown? Yeah, about Wait. three of them since I've been in this group. Since I've been in this business, you know. Really? Mm. Gee, I didn't mean to pry, but since you brought yeah. it up, I, yeah. I thought I would mention it. Pry, that's cute. That's yeah. great. Um, they said that everyone was amazed at the absence of violence. It's become a cliche now about that big festival and about the others. Were, were you surprised at it? Do you think that? I was glad. I was glad. That's what yeah. it's all about, you know. Yeah. So, try to keep violence down, you know, keep them off the streets. And like a festival of 500,000 people was a very beautiful turnout, you know. Mm -hmm. I hope we have more of them, you know. It'd be nice. Yeah. What was the controversy about the national anthem and the way you I don't played know. It? All I did was play it. I'm American, so I played it. I used to sing it in school. They made me sing it in school, so mm -hmm. it was a flashback, you know. I don't know about it. This man was in the 101st Airborne, so when you write your nasty letters in, Wow, right. you really well, people, when you mention the national anthem and uh, talk about playing it in any unorthodox way, you immediately get a guaranteed percentage of hate mail from people well, who say, how that's dare That's not unorthodox. Anyone. That's not unorthodox. It isn't unorthodox? No, no. I thought it was beautiful. But then there you go. Yeah. Oh, but there. Don't you find that there's a certain mad beauty in unorthodoxy? Yeah. yeah. I knew you'd do that someday. Yeah, I knew you'd wig time. out on my right, shirt. Right, right, right. Don't forget it. Do they ever uh, send that shirt back with too much starch in the collar? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know my. I don't know nothing. I know nothing about it. That's you the best know. shirt I, I've seen in a long time. Mm -hmm. um, why, why do the super groups keep breaking up? There are always there are always rumors that your group is breaking up and Big Brother broke up and. Well, probably because like they want to get into individual things on their own, or maybe mm -hmm. they might want to get into other things besides music. You know. And, uh, you mean guys in your group would be would want out of the business, out of the music business, and into? Well, not necessarily. Maybe they might want to get into their own music. Cause like what I was yeah. trying to do, like was, like do a today's type of blues, like manic depression and so forth. And mm -hmm. like Noel Redding, he's like he's into more harmonic thing. You know when you sing and so forth. And like he went to England to get his own group together. Oh, who's this? Noel Redding, the bass. Oh, Noel Redding. Player, right? Yeah. Yeah, Billy Cox playing bass this time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's the last job we we'll do until we, you know take a rest. Really? It's like we've been working very hard for three years, you know. Can you tell uh, some nights you're just not making it at all? Do you ever have oh, the yeah, urge to tell. just walk off and That's why I hate compliments. You know, compliments yeah. are so embarrassing sometimes, because you know really the truth of what's happening. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people don't really try to understand. You know, it's like a circus that might come in town. So, oh, wow, watch that, you know. And then Susie as as fade away. Well, then they go on and feed upon the next thing, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's all right. It's part of life. I'm digging it myself. I like it. <laughs> You're considered one of the best guitar players in the world. Oh, um, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the best in this studio, anyway. How about one of the best sitting in this chair? How about yeah. Do you, do you have to practice every day the way a violinist does? I mean, if you're not working, say you're off in England and you're just taking well, I, off I a like couple to, of months, um, do you have to keep shape every day? Yeah, well, I like to like play to myself and like in the in the room or before we go on stage or something like this or whenever I feel like 
you know, whenever I feel down or depressed or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. I just go on and play. And I can't practice those. It's always constantly, what do you call it, like a jam, you know. It's hard for me to remember any notes because I'm constantly trying to create other things. That's why I make a lot of mistakes. Do you read music? No, not at all. No. no. Uh, do you ever run into the, any of the guys from the old 101st? Yeah, I run into some of my friends. Yeah. Do, they, do they wonder, do they think your life is strange compared to what they're in? Oh, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't matter really because, you know, there's so many different things going on now. You know, I can't, mm -hmm. you can't take time out to say, oh, I don't want to think about me there. Oh, you know, and all this kind of stuff. You know, I can't go through all that. I've been going through it for three years. I think, I think they're uh, pretty, pretty well off if they ever get out of that stuff, you know. To see me again, it's for me to see them. I feel very lucky about that. So. You're still looking for that certain girl? Certain girl? What girl? The, the certain one. <laughs> oh. you, uh, you, you're not married? No. Do you see yourself married ever? No, I hope not. <laughs> but you'll never get a situation comedy on television, then. <laughs> <laughs> By that time, I think it would be obsolete. <laughs>